Does that moon look super to you? Hey there, stargazers. I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Pla Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. And I'm Dean Regis, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. Fellow stargazer Marlene Hidalgo will join us to help you find your way around the sky. Well, James, it's almost that time again. What time is that? Time for the supermoon phenomenon. All right. For the past few years, the media has hyped the fact that the moon changes its distance from us and therefore its size in the sky. And when you combine a full moon on the night it's closest to us for the year, you get a supermoon. Super People really seem to love when this occurs, and this year it'll happen on the night of June 22nd. But is a supermoon that super to behold? Let's show you. Okay, we have our sky set for June 17th facing south at 10.30 p.m. The moon has left its first quarter phase and is now a waxing gibbous. That means each day more of the lunar surface will appear lit to us on Earth until the full moon on June 22nd. On June 18th, same time of night, the moon will appear between two bright stars. The one on the right with the bluer tint is called Spica, and it's the brightest star in the constellation Virgo the Maiden. The thing on the left with the yellowish color is really a planet, the planet Saturn. We're still in the heart of Saturn season, so get to a telescope that night and behold the magnificent ringed planet. You can even see its Mercury-sized moon, Titan, nearby. Moving forward in time, on June 19th, the moon will be fuller and have shifted over to the left of Saturn. On the 20th, it'll be approaching the stars Zubinesh Shamali and Zubinel Janubi. And on the 21st, it'll be above the red heart of the scorpion, the supergiant star Antares. That brings us to June 22nd, the night of the supermoon. Hmm. Did you notice any big change in the size of the moon between June 17th and now? I definitely didn't. Let's let Marlene take us in for a closer look at this so-called supermoon. Here's the zoomed in view of the moon from June 18th. At this point, the moon is about 229,000 miles from us. Let's skip ahead two days ahead, and on June 20th, the moon is getting fuller and slightly closer to us at about 223,000 miles. And on the supermoon night of June 22nd, here's the full moon at only 220,500 miles from Earth. That's hardly a super difference. But what if we compare a supermoon to a wimpy moon, a full moon that is farthest from the Earth? The next wimpiest full moon will be on January 15th, 2014. If we put this wimpy moon next to this year's supermoon, well, now that's a noticeable difference. The wimpy moon is almost 252,000 miles away. That's over 31,000 miles farther than the supermoon. This makes the diameter of our supermoon appear 14% larger than the wimpy moon, and in total makes the surface area 30% larger. So a supermoon is significantly brighter than your average full moon. You might not be able to detect the changes day to day, but they are real. The best time to see the supermoon in all its glory is just as it rises. Now we're facing east at 8.30 p.m. on June 22nd. It's not completely dark outside, so you might have trouble finding the moon right on the horizon. But as the sun sets below the western horizon, you'll start to see the biggest full moon of the year creep above the eastern horizon. The moon always looks larger to us when it's near the horizon. That's called the moon illusion, but that's a topic for another show. If it's cloudy on June 22nd, never fear. The very next day, June 23rd, the moon will be almost exactly as close as it was on June 22nd. In fact, it'll be less than 1% farther, so you won't be able to tell the difference. Plus, the moon on the evening of June 23rd will clear the horizon at about 9.30 p.m., so the sky will be darker and the moon will be easier to spot. It won't be the fullest moon or the superest, but you can definitely get outside and howl at it. Keep, Keep looking, looking up. up.